What Declan Did, a short film by Jason David. Westminster. Politicians, civil servants, security and miscellaneous staff jostle and career around in the busy and loud corridor. In the civilised melee, Declan Murray hastily undies his tie from his neck. I'll, I'll be there. Don't, don't, don't you worry, love, love, I, I promise I'll... Yes, I, I know what happened last time. Wow! Declan yelps as he almost collides into the doe-eyed form of Cathy Parler. He wants to speak to you. No, 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 no. You misheard, love. She said someone wants to say goodbye to me because I am leaving the building. I didn't say that. I said the opposite of that. Uh, I, I have to concentrate on leaving the building. I'll speak to you soon. So, 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 sorry, love. Love, love you. Bye, 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 bye. Who wants to see me? Hubler fucking Khan. I'm an assistant to the chief whip. You're a junior minister, despite being a crusty old man. Use one of your Oxford degrees to work it out. Cambridge? What? Why does he want to see me? I, I haven't done anything <clears throat> recently. Do any of you do anything? Is it historic in nature? You are pretty historic. So I'm going to take a stab and say yes. Hmm. Declan stands on the spot. He sways. Damn it. Chief Whip's reception. I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't know what this is about. No, no. It definitely can't be anything good. I'm sure. I haven't done anything. I, in a good or a bad way. Maybe. Honestly, dear, dear, dear the, the only ambition I have is to get to that dinner reservation with you. The Chief Whip's receptionist, Elizabeth Court, looks at him curiously from behind a desk. Anyway, uh, I've got to go. Uh, order whatever you want to drink on me. No, not that. Christ. Okay, <laughs> love you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Declan turns and puts his tie back on. Liz, Queen Liz, it's been a while. And he will see you now. Do you know why he wants to see me? Uh, Wait, what, what are you, what, are you? That's an HR complaint form, but I haven't done anything. I pre-fill the details for ease of admin. Usually you chaps are here because you've done something wrong. Nothing like a receptionist alone at a desk to make you want to double down on that wrongness. What? No, that's, that is a great time-saving idea. Honestly, I, I, I just wanted to know if you know why I'm here. On so many levels, do I not know? Just wanted a scoop for Skinny, the 411. Elizabeth sighs and begins to write, felt uncomfortable due to outdated phraseology and desperate lingering. But uh, I can see squeezing you for information is a no-go. Squeezing mentally, I, I meant, not actual uh, I'm going to go now. Good luck. Chief Whip's office, day. Senior Whip, Sam Taylor, sits behind a desk in a large office. Her small frame is dwarfed by a grand chair. Its green upholstery contrasts with her haphazard red hair. On one of the two seats in front of her, Sean Robertson stares vacantly in an expensive navy suit. Declan walks in, sees Sam, screams slightly, and then turns to leave. Stop. Sit. Sit like a good boy. Don't run out on me like you sprinted out on your illegitimate sprogs. Don't get me started on things you run away from, fella. For fun, I still watch that CCTV footage of you running naked through that John Lewis. I take pride in the fact that my clit is bigger than your cock. Declan slowly sits in the chair next to Sean. You may be wondering where Andy is and why I'm in his office. Sean raises his head slightly to nod and Declan looks longingly at the open third floor window. Well, it's because I killed him. And now I'm the chief whip. 
I'm not joking. I uh, hid his body in there. Declan and Sean eye the wardrobe with a mixture of curiosity and fear. Sam throws a shoe at it. Declan and Sean scream. A teenage boy, alive, slumps out of the wardrobe and they both scream again. <laughs> Chill out. It's just my assistant. Uh, I call him Bob because intentionally forgetting someone's name dehumanises them and makes them more malleable to your will. Um, Sam? Yes? David? Never mind. See? Bob stands and looks at all three of them awkwardly. He hesitantly moves for the room's only exit. Right, back in the wardrobe with you. Bob shuffles back in and closes the door behind him. See? <laughs> the truth is that very few people want to meet with me. They find me intimidating. Can you believe it? Can you fucking believe it? No, <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I, I can't, can't believe, believe it. it. So sometimes I pretend to be other people. So, uh, so people will come to meetings with me. Effective, right? Does John from accounting really want to talk to you about the 73 pounds you put on expenses for bacon? Or is it me? Right then, enough of this small talk. Let's get down to business. The MP for Mansfield will be standing down next week due to poor health. Thomas? Poor chap, what's wrong with him? Oh, he's sick in the head. Mixed horse semen into icing sugar for a cake he made for his ex-wife. Oh, sticky mess. We'll hit the papers tomorrow. Good God. Did they eat it? Yep. Icing sugar always takes we tastes weird, to be fair, actually. Perfect disguise. Uh, what type of cake was it? Lemon. <laughs> That's my favourite. Mine too. Sam looks between Sean and the wardrobe in disbelief. She walks past the furniture and hits it before standing in front of Sean. She strokes his face delicately and shakes her head. You poor, stupid, beautiful fool. I hope you don't have a big cock. Oh, yes. No, you don't. So the only option you have is power, which takes us neatly to the point. Thomas needs replacing, which means one of you junior ministers have been tapped to step up. Or step out. Step out as in dismissed? Wait, wait, you have the green light to do that? Oh, my sweet Dean. I have the green light to run you over in your old man's stroller. Metaphorically speaking, I can end you or begin you. And I'm in a unique position that I don't care which. <laughs> You're both detritus floating in a sea of mediocrity. Oh, poetic. Uh, one of you is just an older floater than the other. Yeah, yeah, less, less poetic. So, jewel to the death. Tell me. How you'd fix the borough of Mansfield. Aren't, aren't they the ones with the huge unemployment? Most food banks. Wasters. Uh, they also have a prison, though. We could outsource some of the paid prison work to the populace and pay them in food. Sam looks impressed and horrified, like she's sucking a lemon slice covered in creme brulee. Yeah. Could we attach them to some kind of treadmill? that generates power, you know, 10,000 steps for five tins of food, on your heels for meals, or oh, step for your supper, ah, motion for your ration. Please, stop. Dylan. They have a high elderly population, if I recall. We should encourage communal cooking, which would give the edge off the food poverty, which could give it a positive spin. We could hire some of the elderly to work as consultants in the job centres to help the younger unemployed. 
and my name is Declan. Well, that wasn't shit. Thanks. Pam? Both of your ideas are in keeping with our party values. If we were in Victorian time, yours might yours might have won it, Sean. Really? No. Congrats, Declan. You'll be our new candidate in the Mansfield by election. Fuck's sake. Congrats. Yeah, con congrats, bro. Thanks, wardrobe boy. All right, fuck off with your happiness. Not you, Sean. We have to have a difficult conversation about your future. Declan leaves with a wide smile still plastered across his face. As the door shuts, both Sam and Sean relax. Sir, how did you? Oscar Worthy. Stick with me, kid, and you'll go places. I, I want to go places. Chief whips reception, they. Declan waves at Elizabeth as he leaves while on the phone. I feel ten feet taller. I'm the man. I'm a man. I, yeah, I did something. I fucking did something. I'm sorry. I, I meant to say fudging. I'm, I'm, I'm coming, dear. I'm, I'm running. <laughs>